Did, did I say that right, oh, Franz yes. von Houten? You said it great. Oh, good. I actually I pronounced right. my cab driver's name correctly in Chicago here today, and he was very impressed. Um, a different language, though. Um, so, great to be up here with you. Sure. We've talked a few times before. I guess I, I have to say I want to start with the obvious question of the moment, which isn't really what we are here to talk about, but when we planned this evening, who knew what world we would be living in? So we are now in a new regime, the incipient new regime. Um, we have a, and that's a word I probably shouldn't use, it's a new presidency, right? Um, but the, the fact is, the landscape in many ways feels to many of us to be changing. And you're somebody who cares really deeply about uh, connectedness, its impact on healthcare, how digital technology is transforming healthcare, how data is going to make healthcare better, outcomes based healthcare as the future. Does your thinking about all that stuff change at all as a result of what's happened politically? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Because I think the general thrust in which healthcare is changing. Um, is not going to be stopped. I mean, where is it changing? We want quality outcomes, better for the patient, and we want higher productivity, right? That will happen anyway. Um, whoever else, whoever is at the, the helm of, uh, of the country. You think it'll happen anyway just because the economics and the health implications are so unimpeachable and, and inevitable? No, I think everybody wants value for money. Everybody right. wants better outcomes. Uh, every country in the world struggles with the burden of the cost of care on the, on the national GDP. And so we may call it differently in Europe or in China or in the uh, United States. Uh, but I think the, the general trend to, on the one hand, uh, personalize health care for better outcomes for individual patients, which has great promise, is something we all want. We want the best care for our families, for ourselves, um, so we need to conquer disease. Um, and at the same time, it needs to stay affordable. And, and therefore, we have to take the waste out of the system. And therefore, it's logical that um, we are going to pay for results rather than pay for volume. Uh, whoever is it, let's say, from whatever politics you are. So I don't think it's going to change much. I like that. And so one of the things that drives that then, of course, is just the inevitable progress of technology driven by Moore's law, the things we can do are just so cool and so much more efficient, right? Yeah, we, we talk about two main trends that we see happening in the industry. One is personalization. And you only need to look at your own Facebook story, right? Everything is about the individual. Um, and from a, a generic approach to people, it's going to be specific. Social media enable that. Uh, shopping is a personalized experience. Uh, healthcare will become a personalized experience. Um, and that the second trend is that we need to become more efficient. And data is enabling that as well. Because in, in, in industry, we measure everything. Right? And because we measure, we can reduce variance, we can improve quality, we can get the first time right. Uh, data means insights. So if you say personalization and uh, you know, quality of outcomes, uh, measuring everything, data plays a key role. No, so I think digital has, of course, already been adopted within healthcare. Um, but the next wave of digital, which I think you, uh, yeah. you of a fashion frame with yeah. the Facebook era. There's a way bigger That is now happening. Yeah. And uh, we are going to, say, to see a tsunami of data uh, unlocking data from everything we do, measuring every step of the way. And whereas data has been used to optimize departments, what we really need to do is to have data optimize personalized care pathways, mm -hmm. uh, where we get to a diagnosis that's first time right, where we get to a predictive treatment pathway that has the best statistical outcome for you as an individual <laughs> rather than for a generic patient cohort. And, and where patients are supported and coached back to a healthy lifestyle, uh, supported by doctor as a coach through a Facebook kind of media. Uh -huh. uh, and I was impressed with the impact that 
the US population, the VA has, has enabled by giving people access to their own data records, huh? the Blue Button Project, and it changed the behavior of patients. Mm. Right? So data is, is very, very powerful. But I use the word tsunami on purpose because we can also drown in the data lake. Right? So digital needs to be conquered. Um, the beast needs to be tamed, but it has great promise. Wow, I didn't know I was going to get such a good answer to that question. Um, and, but I, I will say, one of the, among the several points you made, one of the things that I often say is that the empowerment of the individual is the single biggest change that technology has brought to modern society. And it has many, many ramifications. But let's talk, go, drill, drill down into the, something else you said, you know, this whole idea of using data and and, and helping the doctor with data, helping the medical professional of whatever sort with data is something you have very concrete products and services you've been working on. Just what are you doing now that you're especially excited about in that regard? Yeah, so my point is that we will get a lot more data around an individual patient. Right. And uh, from radiology, from genomics, from pathology, yeah. um, and longitudinal studies where we can see how the patient has been uh, evolving. Now all of that need to be brought together and it provides the context to hopefully do a first time right diagnosis. But at the same time you have cost pressure and there's less time for an individual patient an analysis. So you can apply, for example, uh, well first of all you need to bring all that data together right, in a context sensitive uh, manner um, and, and not somewhere in a big repository. It needs to be there at your fingertips at the right moment. Um, mm -hmm because then you can make it actionable. Um, secondly, uh, we need to, to make sense of all that data. Um, and extracting data from EMRs or PACs needs to be automatic. Hmm. Right? If you have a patient that has had maybe 20 studies over uh, three years, if you want to see how the tumor is evolving um, with artificial intelligence, we can automatically compare all those studies in a vendor agnostic way and start measuring how the patient is reacting to treatment um, and bring that information to the radiologist who can now spend their time to interpreting what is happening and what maybe needs to happen uh, instead of just gathering that data. And that's very important because I see a role in this world with all the digital data sources uh, to, to go from data collection to data interpretation right. and from and making data insightful and actionable. Who is going to do that across radiology, pathology, and genomics hmm. with an integrated patient-specific way? I think there's going to be new roles, new jobs that we are not even yet aware of. I, I, we, we at Philips dubbed that the, the chief a uh, clinical data scientist, uh -huh. right? somebody who is going to make sense out of the, the data lakes around patients, maybe terabytes of data. And, and the radiologist has a real shot at playing that role if they play their cards right, is that your thinking? That is what I'm implying, yeah, yeah. because you need people that have deep technology understanding that, uh, that can correlate these data. Uh, supported with, let's say, clinical decision support systems to make that easier. But in the end, you would like uh, somebody, a medical professional, to take the right decisions and to support the whole care pathway. So today, often, radiology is a certain fixed moment in time um, helping with the diagnosis. But why would that not be somebody who, over the time of the treatment, uh, as you go to also uh, interventional radiology, supporting that whole pathway, where through imaging you can see how the patient is reacting, where through the interpretation of patient data we can see how, whether the personalized medicine approach is having its effect. So you, you announced something here, I think it was announced, this Illumia thing, which basically is a way of taking software and sort of accelerating the decision-making process. Can you just right. quickly say what that is and how it works? Well, Illumia is, uh, is a artificial intelligence application at the point of care, right? So we hear a lot of big stories about how you can upload data and then maybe uh, an hour later you can get a response. But what the professional needs 
is uh, that power at your fingertips. Um, and my example of um, analyzing how a tumor is reacting to treatment is an ideal example to apply right. deep machine learning and, uh, and algorithms. Uh, we have several other applications like uh, the evolution of Alzheimer uh, to the brain. Uh, that's quite hard to see with the naked eye. Right? Another example is if, if you peer through the microscope at tissue samples uh, and start counting lesions. Let's say machine learning can do a lot there too. Um, similarly, um, we have questions from countries in the Middle East who do uh, tuberculosis screening at the border. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of x-rays every day. Now, how do you make sure that that is all accurate? And uh, we can actually do that also, supported with uh, machine learning. But I want to make one point. This is not going to make the radiologist uh, superfluous at all. Well, that was where I was going to go next. Because there is a huge demand for the interpretation of data. I said, you know, data, tsunami. Uh, so if we can help support the more mundane uh, data gathering, data interpretation tasks, and make that available on a platform that is integrated where pathology, radiology, uh, genomics all come together so that we can form a, a view of that individual patient's journey. I think we can advance medicine to better outcomes and higher productivity. So even though in this automating society, which we see all around us, it's often said that people like radiologists are at risk of total replacement, you don't think that's a real concern. No, but I do think that we need to be cognizant of the fact that digital is also disrupting business models. Um, Uber, Amazon, uh, so whereas digital has a huge promise, uh, we also need to be ready to uh, adopt a new business model. Uh, and maybe that will affect the earnings model for radiologists. I don't know exactly how, but it would be worthwhile to think about it. Now, how can you, as a radiologist, be in the care pathway at multiple instances supporting all the other colleagues? Maybe that is part of the business model evolution. But presumably this idea of a definitive diagnosis arrived at faster in a more outcomes-based model, there's a whole business model set of implications to that set of that Yeah, because changes. if, if the, the, the treatment takes time, why would the, the in, let's say, the contact with the patient not be at multiple times, hmm. right? So I think there's a huge opportunity as you can free up time from maybe doing an individual study to becoming more patient-centric. And if there is one thing that the Facebook era teaches us yeah. is that consumerism and patient-centric care is going to be enabled by social, uh, let's say, technologies and social media. Now, to trans translate that social media effect to the medical practice, and that means that colleagues in the hospital will have much more frequent contact with each other to discuss how the patient is doing. Right? So chatting about the patient, so to speak, uh, why would that not happen all the time with all the data, like on Facebook, at your fingertips? That would be cool. Well, as I understand from what I've learned about radiology preparing for tonight, that kind of thing is of great concern. Bringing the radiologist more toward the center of the diagnostic conversation, in, in many cases with the patient or certainly very close to the patient uh, diagnosis and, and treatment. It's an opportunity. And yeah. I think what we are all after is the holy grail of the definitive diagnosis. Yeah. Um, and I think digital uh, is going to play a huge role in that. Um, so chances all over. What about research? Do you think that these, this set of changes that you're so conversant with is gonna change the way research happens in medicine and maybe accelerate its pace? For sure, because also uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in, in therapeutics, we will see a much more individualized um, approach, personalized medicine. Uh, we already have pharma companies knocking on our doors who need to prove the, the, uh, the evidence that a personalized treatment plan uh, uh, works. And if and I had in my office today a CEO of a hospital system saying that, you know, these are hard decisions if, if a medication costs $20,000. Um, you need to be sure that it has effect. Um, closing the loop 
on uh, patient effectiveness or patient impact is in industrial terms uh, a, a Six Sigma approach mm -hmm. where you start measuring uh, the impact and you, you follow that on an individual patient uh, basis. So I think data uh, will come also during treatment uh, and then we can maybe fine tune the treatment as we go, but it will require uh, an, a continuous relationship with the patient rather than an episodic relationship with the patient. List, listening to you talk about that, it does sound like in some ways medicine broadly moves more towards being similar to other industries in terms of the way it's managed at the macro level as, I mean, the way ideally industries ought to be managed as data becomes more central. In other words, it becomes a little more systematizable, perhaps. Well, systemat systematizing is good because uh, standardized best practice leads for uh, less waste and better outcomes. But at the same time, we want to individualize it, yeah. right? which we need to be careful that right. we don't strike everybody with the same four by three. Right, so it's both at the same time. Yeah, and, and I think individual measurements enable that. You know, air aircraft engines have sensors in them and get measured in real time all the time. Right? And we can do predictive maintenance. And I have my Apple Watch, so there we go. Well, we can do predictive maintenance on yeah. you as well. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> but that's the point you're making. Right. Yes. Even though I'm making a joke. But yes, it's real. That's right. Do you have one of those devices on you? No, I still like my analog watch. But you, I don't know what that says you, I've about I've seen me. you wearing them before. <laughs> anyway, so we got to wrap. I have a, uh, you know, a hidden, a hidden uh, uh, wearable patch. Okay, there so you go. So why would I need to... You don't need a Replace watch. I'm, I'm not saying it has okay. to be a watch. I'm just right. saying you got to digitize yourself. So we, we yourself. have it under the, under the clothes. That's cool. Right. So we got to wrap, but any closing thoughts you didn't get to say that you want to say to this audience or anything? No, it's, it's, it's great that you're all here. And I, I think that, well, maybe there is one more thing. I, um, I, 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 I would like to make the plea that technology is something that we should make purposeful for ourselves. And we do that by co-creating that together, right? So rather than feeling threatened by technology, uh, let's say, let's all lean in and make technology work for us. Because that is, I think, what we all need to do. Um, and that is why great companies, uh, despite business model changes, flourish, yeah. right? And I think if you look at the digital revolution and all the new business models and the Ubers coming up, uh, you better be courageous and lean in, or if you sit back and relax, you may find yourself to be obsolete. So well, we don't want that. I'm right. glad you ended with that, because that's what we like to call a very techonomic way of looking at the All world. Right, so thank good. you. Well, very good. Really thank good. you. Thank you so much, Franz. Thank you all. <laughs>